Join me as we go grab Stolen Air by Holly Black from the bookstore. It recently just released and I had to go get it in person. The Barnes & Noble next to me recently just shut down and reopened in this new location. So this is my first time checking out this location. It is bigger than my last location and it just seems a bit more modern and clean. And I found this really nice edition of Chain of Gold. It's so nice. It's matte black with like gold foiled edges. Very nice indeed. Overall, I was a bit overwhelmed with this new location. At my last location, everything was like in stacks, but since this one was so open, I see all of the young adult books, and it was just overwhelming. And tell me why. Cruel Prince and Stolen Air is down here in the tiniest corners of the depths of this bookstore. I had to go all the way down into this corner to get this book, and I got the second to the last one, and they only had the Barnes & Noble edition. Overall, I really liked my experience. I like the new layout of this bookstore, and I will definitely be returning because your girl has to get these infinite threads next. Plus, this had like a really big manga section, and a lot of the stories next to me didn't, and you guys know I'm getting into my manga era. Then I went to Half Off Books, and tell me how. They have the same book, but the original edition for only $16. I was bamboozled. Today we are reading Stolen Air by Holly Black. So Oak Story has finally been released. I'm excited for it. I read the Core Prince trilogy last year and the first book, four stars, liked it. The next two, definitely the final one, was a five star book for me. And I even read the accompanying novella this is ha like has more stories about cardian and like his journey and his lifestyle growing up but wow i'm so excited so i went to barnes and noble and i got the stolen air i was very surprised that it was um all the way at the bottom of the bookshelf and i got like the second to the last copy i also got the barnes and noble edition this was more expensive than i expected it to be it was about 20 it came up to $20.80. Yeah, this was very expensive. And then tell me how I went next door to Half Off Books and I saw it like the regular edition for $16. But it's okay. I got the hardback edition. If I do physically annotate this, I am going back to Half Off Books and getting the regular edition so that I don't have to annotate my special Barnes & Noble edition. But so far, I don't really see what makes this special, honestly. It says it's the Barnes & Noble exclusive edition, but... Honestly, there's nothing very special about it, except for the fact that the hardback cover has a cute little, I want to say fox or wolf on it, with a heart in its mouth. And I want to say it's a fox, because yes, I have indeed started reading it. I'm on like page 70 already. I started reading it last night. I could not hold out, you guys. I could not hold out. So Oak is like all grown up in this one, and to my surprise, he is not the main character that this story is being told through. He is the love interest, and the main character is Ren, also known as Seren, and we're getting her life story, which was very surprising. I did not expect that. As far as the covers go, I do like the Barnes & Noble exclusive edition cover a lot. I think it's really cute, but I don't know. I haven't seen many special editions for this yet, so I don't know what the other special edition covers look like, but Acardian and Jude, spin-off series and i believe this is gonna be duology i'm expecting a lot for book one i'm expecting it not to be scene setting i'm expecting a five star book but on all honesty i think it's gonna be four stars because i think it is gonna do scene setting and i feel the same way about coral prince i think it was four stars because it had that scene setting but the scene setting had to get done it just had to so i expect that for this one but since it is a duology the second book has to be like huge and get a lot of work done and that's one of my other reasons that I just, 
I feel like duologies don't always live up to my hype because I'm a series gal. I love series books and I feel like this one have been better as a trilogy but I don't know what's gonna happen in this book and I don't know what's gonna happen in book two but I hope that if this is a duology indeed it is not the story isn't too short for me. I want it to be long enough, satisfactory, some weird things I have to get over. Oak is now like 17, he's like a man, and in The Crow Prince, he was literally a child. He was like, I don't know, eight, nine? He was a kid, he was a pretty young kid. Maybe he could, he might be even younger than that. So I'm definitely dealing with the fact that I have to misplace his age and the age of Surin. Surin so far seems pretty chill. Um, she definitely does not have a regular background. But, um, first thoughts going into this, I want it to be an epic love story. I want it to be Jude and Cardigan have some big shoes to fill, but I think Oak and Surin can fill it. Oak and Ren can fill it. Like, they have potential. I expect really good writing and very complex characters and developments. What else? I just want an epic love story. Like, give me epic. Give me strength. Give me something new and phenomenal. And yes, I do really want a Jude Cardian type cameo. I want to know where they are in their life. Do they have any kiddos? Like, I want the tea on them. But I also just want them to have a second series, honestly. And hopefully after the duology is done, they do get a second series. But, um, yeah. I'm ready for it. By the way, I do not care for T, the Valiant, or Ironside, so I don't have that side of the Elfenham world story down because I found it boring. I did read it a long time ago when I was a kid. Gave them all three stars, did not care for the story or the storytelling. And I'm happy that the hype brought me to the girlfriends because I probably would not have read it. So let's do some scene setting. It's been eight years since the Battle of the Serpent, and you guys know, it's the great battle. By the way, this vlog's gonna have spoilers, y'all. I'm gonna be having spoilers because I have to talk about this book. And most likely there will be spoilers because I feel like when epic things happen, I need to talk to people about it. It's the whole reason I made a booktube. So I will try to give you guys warnings before that happens, but this is the warning, honestly. This is the warning. I love you guys, go read it. Like, Come back to me to talk about it, please. I need people to talk about books with. I really do. Anyway, Lady Noor of the Court of Teeth has reclaimed the Ice Needle Citadel, and she's using this ancient relic to create monsters of stick and stone who will do her bidding and exact her revenge. Surin, the child queen of the Court of Teeth and the one person with the power over her mother, has actually fled to the human world. Why does this sound so familiar? And she lives feral in the woods. Lonely and haunted by all the things that she has endured at the Court of Teeth, she bids her time by releasing mortals from their stupid little curses that they have put themselves into. Ren truly believes she has been forgotten until one day Bogadana, the storm hag, chases her through the streets at night. And she is saved by none other than Prince Oak. Our little Oak, he's all grown up now. Heir to Elfenheim, she was once promised in marriage and she has actually resented him for years. I didn't know she resented him. That's surprising. Now 17, Oak is charming, beautiful, and manipulative. Ooh. Is this enemy to lovers? He's on a mission that will lead him into the Ice Needle Citadel and he wants Ren's help. But if she agrees, it will mean guarding her heart against the boy she once knew and a prince that she cannot trust and as well as confronting all the horrors she thought she left behind. Return to the opulent world of Elfenheim, filled with intrigue, betrayal, and dangerous desires. With the first book of a captivating new duology, New York Times bestselling author Holly Black. Okay, expectations, enemies to lovers, friends to lovers, arranged marriages. So let us begin. Since Ren is indeed part, is indeed a fairy, 
like a full-born fairy, we are getting the experience of what it's like to be a fairy. In the Crow Prince, we never got this. So there's stuff that she's referring to in the modern day world that she's currently in, like iron, traffic, modern day things that fairy doesn't have to deal with, but humans do. And getting her perspective on it is very intriguing. It opens a world to fairy that we had not yet seen as an outsider from Jude's perspective that we're now getting as an insider, not an insider entirely because she wasn't fully raised in fairy, but like as an insider who has fairy, fairy experiences. pages in so far it is hard to reconcile oak as like a grown adult versus when he was in curl friends he was just a child and i didn't have much recollection of ren so i am pretty much producing her from scrap because i don't remember her in the other books at all so if you want to do a reread of the books just to see where ren and her story plays out you can but i didn't remember her or her story or i have like this flickering memory of her being like a side character in one of the books i think it was book two i don't know maybe book three i don't know but overall oak is giving oak is giving fox boy what's fox boy's name he was the one messing with jude when he shouldn't have been messing with jude what is his name i was calling him dusty the entire time i was reading the first trilogy so i don't remember his name But since Oak is pretty much his half-brother, they look very similar, like the fox-like eyes and the mannerism and how he can manipulate people. So I never knew this, but in this book, it's explaining how... What is his name? Now it's gonna bother me. I just have to go get the book. And yes, my book is very nicely tabbed up. What is his name? name name what is your name Locke. his name is Locke. okay so Locke is oak's half brother and they actually look very similar with the like fox-like eyes and the manipulative mannerisms and behaviors but it turns out that it's not a behavior it's literally a gift that some fairy folks have the gift of like um what did they call it in this book what did they call it love talker so pretty much let me just go to the page where it's explained because i found that to be very crucial information a love talker is able to quicken such a desire in mortals that they die of it the folk might not find the passion lethal but we still feel it oak's first mother charmed high king eldred and his son danian into her bed oak's half brother is said to have made both jude and her twin Terran his lovers and stolen Cardian's former betrothal from his side. So, Jude is human. So when Locke was putting all this like love talker work on her, he was truly messing with her mind. With his magical powers. It's like ensorceling. What's that word? When you ensorcel, I can't pronounce it. The thing that fairies do to humans. But, um, pretty much. He can do it to both fae and human. To human it's deadly, so thank god Jude survived and has this beautiful happy ending. And so did Taryn. Or Taryn. I, keep, I don't care about her, honestly. Oak. That's his power. And Ren's out here like, what is he gonna do to me? <laughs> so this is getting exciting and I like it a lot so far. I am still haven't gotten to the point of wanting to physically annotate. That one scene with the love talk did make me want to annotate, but so far, no. It's very scene setting still, and I'm still getting a grasp of the characters, but it's good. I like it. Only regret is that I don't have this book on ebook because I will be able to gobble it up, 
I mean on audiobook because I'm having to go through the slow process of reading this and I have a lot of stuff I would rather do like clean and do dishes not like rather do but kind of have to do and I would love to have to be able to put on my audiobook and just got all my work done I'm such a productivity babe like I love being productive I like getting my to-do list checked off and I don't want to put down this book to go walk my dog but here we go and yes I'm gonna put on real people clothes <music> So I'm on page 252 and yes I was reading all throughout the night. This is my little reading light. I love it. I wish it actually got lower though. It only has three settings. This one, this one, and that one. This is the one I usually keep it on. Tell me how there is a scene where Oak acts pretty much acts as Saren to dance with him and it reminded me so much of when Cardi and Jude were dancing together. I think it was in The Cruel Prince and it was just a, an iconic moment for me because at that point we didn't know like Cardian's feelings for her and I feel like it's the same like mirroring in Saren and Oak. I think Oak really likes her and I'm pretty sure he does because these are our main love interests but like how is this gonna play out? Like I really wonder how know how this is gonna play out. I'm really in the dark about this and honestly they're just so cute. Like, Surin is literally this feral, fierce girl who's like getting used to like living in the normal fairy world and like normal world in general because she like grew up in the forest. So they're like, oh, well, you're like the solitary fae. She's like, uh, yeah, kinda, not really, but it's like the closest description that she can get to of her own personal life and experiences, but there's still not a good enough box to check off for it, which I feel like is representative of so many people's lives. None of them really truly fit in a box. It's just which one is the closest. I like that in Holly Black work. It's very reminiscent of the real world, unfortunately, but um, it's very grounded and I like that. So far it is scene setting and adventureful. It's like this adventureful scene setting. So right now I'm already at like, let me give four stars because I haven't gotten bored. I've been eager to read it and like put off everything else I need to do in life. And I've been trying to avoid doing that. But I'm pretty sure I'm gonna finish this tonight. There's only 350 pages and I'm on 252. So there's 100 pages. I can kill that in a night. How confused Surin feels about Oak is reasonable because I'm confused about Oak. I think even Oak himself is confused. I have not begun annotating and I kind of stopped tapping too. I just didn't feel like it anymore but there is a lot of characters we're getting introduced to and I feel like I'm gonna have to go back and tab them so I can remember it for book two but I'm probably not gonna do that in all I see. I feel like this is a good first book for a duology and I want the second book to be perfection. Like I really think I'm gonna give this four stars. It's a solid four for me and it's a good four. It's not like a wonk four, but it's like a good four. And I read like one sentence of the last page and I was just like, uh, why did I do this to myself? <laughs> but we're gonna find out that later. I don't know the premise on which that one sentence fits together, but I have an inkling, a tinkling inkling of what it might be and I'm just like, oh no. By the way, isn't this little fox thing the cutest? Like, isn't that adorable? It's so cute. It's like, it's like a little fox baby. A little tiny foxy baby. I love the reminiscence of fox being very symbolic in their relationship. Also for him and for her. Very adorable and cute. But overall, I don't have any favorite scenes yet. Like I have some like, ooh, is this scene gonna be it? And then it just trickles away. We're getting there. We are getting there. And now I'm gonna continue reading. I'll probably finish this tonight. Okay, so I just finished reading Stolen Air and we're gonna do, we're gonna update my reading vlog. So I got this from my fairy loot box not too long ago, probably like a week ago or something like that. 
Stolen Air is book two that I have read for 2023. It's the second book I've read in 2023 and we're gonna put it in a reading journal. So I kind of want to do a booktube journal and then do a reading log and then the booktube journal has like spreads and like reading logs and like all those extra stuff and then this has like the actual reading log so it doesn't get confused and it has its own predestined space <laughs> Okay, so I've officially finished Stolen Air by Holly Black, and I have to say, it's a four-star read for me. I stayed up and I finished it. It's 352 pages. It did take me about three days to read it-ish, 70 pages the first day, I think about 200-ish pages the next day, and then I finished the rest of it in one fell swoop another day. Overall, I did not annotate it since it is... Hi, doggy. Since it is four stars, I did not annotate it. I had some like preludes to want to annotate it here and there, but overall I did it. I just did a tabbing system and I mostly just did tabs for like an important scene and and characteristics of characters, just so I can remember them for the duology. This Oak and Surin live up to the Jude and Cardian hype. Overall, so far, I don't think so. But if I had read Curl Prince and compared Stolen Air to Curl Prince, I would have agreed the same way. I think book two is where this is going to pop off. And I know this is a lot le recently in the last year. It's book two that usually pops off. Um, Shatter Me, book two popped off. Curl Prince, book two popped off. Uh, a Court of Thorns and Roses, book two popped off. Book two, which is a duology, and I wish this was a trilogy, it's gonna pop off. That's my theory, that's my thought process, but I love this. Surin is this tortured, feral person who's learning to live in regular fae society, which is like a mixture of her mortal world, her fae world, and Oak's fae world. And then she's dealing with who she is, who she can become. This is not like a book, like not like other girls. This is relatable it deals with poverty homelessness um uh, longing wants feeling misunderstood and not wanted by your own family even though you love them and you know that they love you it's just so beautiful um i can't wait to see more of this talked about in book two because this is great i love this and i honestly think bex surin's sister is gonna have like some side story that's a theory I have. I don't know why I have this theory, but that's a theory I have. Anyway, is the Barnes & Noble exclusive edition worth it? No, it's not. I don't think it's worth it. The only thing that made this an exclusive edition for me is the fact that it has this beautiful white um, hardback with the wolf. I mean, the fox. The fox is so cute. But other than that, there's nothing that makes me want this book outside of a different special edition. I think it's... I want to say it's Fairy Loot that's doing a special edition of this to go with their past edition or it's um a little crazy. One of them is doing a special edition. It releases January 23rd and I'm considering getting it because I feel like book two is going to pop off but I don't want to get it just yet either because if book two doesn't pop off and I have the special edition of a book I don't plan on rereading it's going to be like annoying for me but then again it is a default five star read because it's part of the cruel prince world and if i ever want to be in the world more i could just pick up this book you know we shall see i don't know honestly and like the special edition is really nice too but i just don't know it was it was like i say it's scene setting but it has lots of action it so it's more like premise scene setting but it's full of action so if you like action you're gonna enjoy this we had several adventures love that the love story wasn't really it was definitely somewhat of a scene setting for the love story and it's going to inch up into like being bigger i believe in book two but also there's lots of flashbacks about oak and Surin's childhood and them getting to know each other and there's lots of relations between the stuff we found out in this book that if we knew about in, in the crow prince and like the wicked king trilogy it would have made the reading experience way different than it was so far 
Cardian and Jude has not really made an appearance, but I feel like they will in book two because of how this ended. This ended on such a cliffhanger. By the way, if you like Fae, you're gonna love this book. It's super Fae. It has adventures that's somewhat leaning towards high fantasy-ish, but not yet, for me at least, because I love fantasy. And th I have a gray line between fantasy and high fantasy, so it depends on you, but it does have reference to the mortal world, and I did not find them to throw me out of the fantasy world because of how it's set in and how it interacts with each other. It truly works like symbiotic to each other instead of like you hear pop culture and modern day worlds reference in other fantasy literature and it just completely throws you out completely throws you out but not for this one in my experience so far favorite characters i think it has to be ren because of her story but we didn't get a lot of oak story like we didn't get a lot of his story from him yet so i'm waiting for that in book two and for the side piece characters, I don't really care for any of them, really. I only really like Ren, so far. But I feel like my heart wasn't super invested in the characters because I was hooting and rooting for a hardcore fantasy romance and it just wasn't that hardcore. It was more of a premise to a hardcore fantasy romance. And that's fine with my soul, I still give it four stars. <sighs> Overall, I enjoyed this reading vlog. I'm so happy I got it. By the way, the Barnes Noble Special Edition. Okay, the only thing that makes this special is that there is a notes from behind the scenes content for Slen Air. Includes Holly Black's journals and annotated pages. That's it. There's nothing else special. I feel like unless you're someone who likes writing and the work behind authorship, you would like that. But honestly, I feel like a deleted scene might have been better or like a chapter from another's perspective would have been better or perhaps a like side mini story quest or something like that but I love writing I like the art behind writing but I would have preferred one of the others like a deleted scene or a dual POV changeover something like that but I did actually enjoy it since I am um going to start writing again soon. I was supposed to write for NaNoWriMo, it didn't happen, but I enjoyed seeing how she broke down some of her thoughts. So I appreciate that since I want to get into writing, but I think I'll only use it once and reference it once and never go back to it again, ultimately. But when the duology comes out for the last book of The Soul and Air, I'm gonna be so happy. Like, I'm gonna be so happy because I feel like it's gonna be five stars and beyond it might just break us and the fact that oak kind of looks like Locke and have references to him and i really liked Locke's character like even though he was a dusty even though he did taryn and jude wrong and all his friends wrong and Nar what was her name narcissia narcissia i don't remember her name but he did them all wrong but he was an intriguing character and i enjoyed reading about him even though I called him Dusty like 90% of the time. But he was a Dusty, so. <sighs> okay, so what do you guys think? Tell me about Stolen Air. Have you read it? Tell me your experience down below. Let's talk about it because I am itching to talk to someone about it. My friend that reads books with me, she is in England right now, so we cannot communicate. Besides, I don't think she even read The Girl Prince, so she wouldn't get what I'm talking about. And this is where y'all come in. It's time to talk about The Stolen Air. If you haven't even read the book yet, but you still watch this video, just tell me your theories, your thoughts, your opinions, what you expect, what you don't expect, your wants, your needs. I'm here for them. Happy reading, y'all. Bye.